This Butch and Bob show is being brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Murphy Builder Supply, O'Quinn & Associates, and Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings. At Prime South Bank, we know the kind of banking we do matters. By helping farmers grow blueberries and peanuts, a stylist grow her customer base, or a restaurant owner his reputation, we're growing our community. We do this with the kind of flexible, accessible local lending that makes community banks America's favorite small business lender. Helping you grow your business means our community's progress never stops. Don't find a bank. Find your prime at Prime South Bank. Member FDIC. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Country Financial is ranked number one in customer satisfaction for home insurance according to J.D. Power. Why am I sharing such big news instead of some mascot or movie star? Because at Country Financial, we don't invest in all that. We invest in our clients. Call me, Stephanie, at 912-588-1051 at Shauna Quinn's office to learn more about Country Financial's J.D. Power award-winning home insurance. For J.D. Power 2020 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance company bloomington illinois damon's famous fingers and wings restaurant in jessup is now open for business practicing social distancing but still serving that great food that damon's is famous for come inside or come to the drive through but damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers and then use the same the service is fast and the food is fantastic and the sauces remain the same mild wild insane or inferno the number is the same 588 wing 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup. Dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. Time for the world-famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO 105.5 on your FM dial. Good morning, Bob. How you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great? I mean, yeah, I get mean, to host another round of state yeah, playoff action. Don't have to make that trip to Atlanta. I mean, it's all good. <laughs> all good. That was good news to see that Blessed Trinity got beat by St. Pius. Got Coach McDonald in here, and it's good news for you as well. Like you said, you know, you'd love to have these kids just sleep in their own beds, play at home, big home crowd. Big advantage, so it should be fun on Monday. Coach Mack, Coach Mack in the studio with us. Go ahead, Coach. Yeah, it is. You know, we I guess we had everything for both scenarios, kind of a travel plan if we had to go there. And, you know, fortunate being Mother's Day, you know, we probably left on Sunday. But, you know, now our kids get to spend a day with their family and, and, and be here. And then, obviously, playing here on Monday is going to be, you know, I think the last quarterfinal was Carrollton here in 17. So uh, it's been quite some time since we hosted a quarterfinal. And, you know, it's going to be something special there. I'm looking at the bracket. I mean, it's it's falling our way because no matter what, if we get to the final four, no matter who wins between Loganville and Harris County, we're going to play the final four here. I'm kind of in a looking ahead because – it would be fun to have Loganville come to our place after, you know, what yeah. they saw took place down in Savannah. But anyway, that's, you know, don't want to get the cart before the horse. But, again, the bracket fell. You know, people ask that question. If we get to the Final Four, would we play on home or away? The way the bracket is set up now, if we got to the Final Four, it would be home as well. Yeah, it will. And, you know, I can remember a couple of weeks ago I was getting upset about the coin toss because I think we lost we lost the top part and then we lost the, the, or we lost the quarterfinal f- coin toss and then we lost the semifinal one if it matched up with one seeds but again i i think everything happens for a reason and you know uh, our kids are are, are deserving of, of what they've got and what they've accomplished and you know i'm just looking forward to i know there'll be a little bit of yesterday wasn't a lot of energy at practice but i know today there'll be a lot more energy at practice when we we get going and you know with the standpoint of those especially those nine seniors knowing that they get to play at home again so Let's go back to Tuesday because everywhere I go since Tuesday, people ask, "Does the lightning delay really help that much?" <laughs> it was, you know, and, it, and it was funny because that's the consensus out there, Bob. And, and, I'm, and I'm still, dude, getting, we got that lightning. I'm still break. getting crushed because, like I said, 
I told people looking out of the press box, I always saw sunshine skies. And, it was bar- and, and dark behind And they're me. walking off the field, and I'm saying, "Well, I've seen something else." And I, because smiling, I thought they were taking a heat break. Yeah. Then my phone's lighting up. No, there's a, the rain. There's lightning there. So it was a lightning delay. But if you know, once that lightning tape goes off, it's at least thirty minutes. Correct. So again, uh, you know, did it help? Oh, I, I, I think you know everybody got to hit a reset button. You know. I think it gave our kids, and I know me me personally, it gave me a chance to sit back and kind of, you know, you, I think the one good thing about it is is we can always go back to what it felt like when you were down 7-4 to four and how close it was to being over. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think we, we talked to our kids about that yesterday. Is <laughs> There's no guarantee of anything happening from here on out. So, you know, again, it, it goes back to the deserve-to-win mentality and doing everything right. And, and giving yourself an opportunity for success, whether whether you're you're in the situation at that time or it may be it may be in game three or, or game one that that you get the opportunity, but know that you've earned the right to be successful. And you know, I, I do think that played a little bit of a allowing those guys to get in there, relax, and you know what happened in that locker room was special too. And that that thirty minute deal, and you know, I think that's a big reason why our program is what it is. And the fact that Sizemore was really rolling, you know, I tell people not only do you have to sit out the 30 minutes lightning delay, but before that, that's when they rallied. Yeah. They had that long inning, so he, he went a long time in between pitches. So, you know, you see it all the time in Major League Baseball when there's a rain delay like that. They don't normally bring back the same no. pitcher. So I wonder if that had more effect on him it, as well. We were surprised that he come back out. I know he was – uh when he come out of the – after we scored in the bottom of the six, he was up around 90, 91 pitches. And then you add the 12 that he had the day before. So he was at 102. He had 18 more. So he possibly could have come back in the bottom of the seventh. But, you know, I think the one thing that our guys did a great job of is coming out of there and, and, and being aggressive at the plate. And, you know, with him, he's a strike thrower. And if you let him get ahead in the count, then obviously he's got some good – secondary pitches outside of his fastball that he can get you out with and that seemed to be what happened there early in the game as we were taking the fastball and allowing him to work his stuff and and you know when you well, anybody that that can get ahead with a fastball then then can can work around the plate and try to make you hit hit their stuff you know they're going to be successful so again give our kids credit i I wasn't aware until you mentioned after the game that there was five pitches in those four runs. Yeah, we and, went from yeah. seven four down to eight seven up in five pitches. Yeah. Luke Boykin first pitch double, Blake Brockington first pitch single, uh, Zach Thomas got hit by a pitch, and then Brewer, yeah, base hit the left as well. Wow. I mean, that's uh, sufficient. You, you don't you don't see that <laughs> there, no. but it was like you said they, they just their whole approach changed. They yeah. got aggressive and they jumped on that first pitch fastball. And I mean, I they jumped on, but really yeah. Perkins, you know, Zach uh, Thomas made a good point after the game. I said, "What was the key?" He said, "Look, that Jack Perkins at bat, where he fouled off pitch after pitch after pitch, and then got the solid base hit." He said, "It just kind of, you know, got everybody fired up and yeah. just uh, made everybody think, you know, we can possibly do this." But, yeah, uh, I mean, it's a you know, I know you've been, we've been through a lot of some, but I don't know where this one ranks up there pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the top ones, you know. That at bat with with Jack fouling those pitches off. I know he fouled a couple that seemed like they were in the catcher's mitt. I'm talking about seeing it a long time, and you know the more you foul off, the better the better he was on it. And obviously he had a a good swing and got a single, and then a big walk by Aiden behind him. You know that that's another that's, that's first and second with one out, and then obviously Dennison uh, put a good swing up the middle, and you know him getting down the line. You know he he was able to get out of the box and get down the line, and you know that that one out mattered right there that 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 he did and you know we we preached our guys when when there's two outs in the inning there's still 33 percent of that inning left and you know i always used to the saying that if i told you go buy a lottery ticket and you win a million dollars you got a 33 percent chance would you go do it and they said yeah so you know 33 percent is a lot of a lot of an inning left to be able to score runs and fortunately it worked out for us on yeah we talk about the home field advantage uh i was during that lightning delay I ran into a guy from Northside Columbus, and I was. I told him, I said, man, I don't know who that center fielder you got, but he stole at least three extra base hits for us. He's a heck of a player. And he says, well, I'll give you all a compliment. He says, I've been traveling the state with my son for the last four years. 
all these places in Atlanta and all around. He said, I've never seen an atmosphere right. like this. He said, this is, he said, this is <laughs> never, huh? You know, he said, this is incredible. He said, you get this all the time. I said, well, we get a decent crowd, you know, during home games and region matches, but you know, playoffs, most people come out to watch the playoffs, but the, you, you can't say enough about the, um, the advantage it is for Wayne oh, yeah. County. I mean, a lot of these teams come in, they're just intimidated. You know, I said the North Springs, that's why he wanted to play early because he used to be a troop when he knew what kind of crowd yeah. Wayne County is going to bring. So, I mean, it is an advantage, uh, and I know it's going to be packed Monday, no matter what time it is. Uh, hopefully, it'll be about four, four thirty, yeah. maybe five o'clock. But uh, I know that's what you're pushing for. So, if you've been in touch with St. Pius at all, I know they finished the game late. They didn't play that game till six o'clock, and I think got over around nine o'clock. So, have you had any contact at yeah, all? Yeah, we've, well, we've texted each other, and I know he asked kind of what our plan was, and and I told him four thirty and seven or forty minutes after game one on Monday, and then. Obviously, I mentioned that we could go five if they want to travel on Monday for the start of the doubleheader. But, you know, he, he mentioned it was good to him. He just had to check with his administration. So we should get on the phone with him this morning sometime and, and get it finalized. And and hopefully it don't get drawn out as it, as it did last week. You know, I, that put a, I, that was I, that was stressful for me. And I know Dr. McDaniel and our administration, I know it was stressful on them to have to deal with something like that. And, you know, I ho- ho- hopefully for the sake of, the short turnaround, we don't have to deal with that. We can get it set up. So, you know, there, there's end of the day, there's parents that are involved at work that need to make plans as well. So we want to give them as much time, especially it being a, a Friday when we make it, to give them time to uh, make plans accordingly so they can be there. Right. Do you think they'll come Sunday like we would go up there to Atlanta? Or do you think they'll come Monday? Or well, I'm not sure. I know Mother's Day kind of throws a wrinkle in it. But uh, I guess, you know, we were going to leave after lunch on Sunday. So uh, I, I'm assuming, you know, most of the teams that, that that have come down here that's played at where so far they they've come down they come down on Sunday so you know uh, again we fortunate we'll be able to kind of keep our same routine that we did last week as far as the Friday Saturday Sunday practice and and get ready to go Monday. Well, you made a trip up there. They played like I said they played the if game yesterday, but the day before they had the doubleheader, and you made a trip up there so you had a chance to watch them. But you were telling me that Blessed Trinity has a nice ball field, but they wouldn't have. The seating, they, you said they had bleachers, maybe a hundred people. So yeah, that they, wasn't any. They were I don't think they was ready what for what could have possibly come up there. But fortunately, we don't have to to worry about that. But you know, and uh, another thing, we were kind of you know concerned about the, you know a lot of our guys throughout the summer, throughout their summer circuit, they play on turf all turf fields, and you know there is some uh, some uncommon things that happen. You know, obviously the one big one is sliding. You know, kids. You know, sometimes they you, you can't slide the same way on turf as you do on dirty. You go right past the base. So there were some things that we were going to have to do extra uh, as far as getting our kids ready for the ones that hadn't had a lot of experience on turf. And they, you know, fortunate that we don't have to worry about that uh, all the way through the rest of this thing. Yeah, we talk about rankings all the time. They don't mean anything to the end of the season. Like I said Blessed Trinity was ranked all year long, number one. But uh, they're gone. Same thing with Buford. Buford ranked number one all year with all those pitchers throwing 90s. The Pope beat them out. So I tell it all the time, you don't have to be the best team. You just have to be the best team that day. Correct. So yeah. if you're that best team that day, you advance and survive. So, But looking at the bracket, it's the same cast of characters. Cartersville is in there. Loganville, Wayne County, Greenbrier is kind of new to the yeah. thing. But they look like they got a very good baseball team from the scores. Yeah, I see. Stars Mill. Yeah. Stars Mill still you know, there. It's right? amazing that you know we have a very – Big, long tradition here, and tradition of a successful Wayne County baseball at the high school. And, uh, you know, the, the, the crowds have just been there year in, year out because, you know, winning brings people out. Right. And, and even in Wayne County, we have found out in Wayne County, even when you're not winning, the crowds still come out. But you would think these other teams, as you said, it's the same cast of characters, the Logansvilles and all these ones. You would think since they have successful baseball programs year in, year out, like Wayne County, they would have good crowds. What makes Wayne County so different, Coach? I'm not sure, but uh, I remember hugging my wife after the game and tell her I love this place. So, uh, you know, this is this isn't normal. I know that much that that for a high school atmosphere and, and baseball to be what it is here, and you know, the student section, you know, our, our school administration d- does a great job of pumping it up and. And getting the kids into the to especially on that two o'clock start, allowing those kids to check out and be able to come to the game, and you know that 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 little section in the in those bleachers, it, they they get after it and they do it the right way. You know, it's nothing degrading and all. You know, they they go about the go about it the right way and are are, are cheering for 
for their team and you know i think it's a big factor and not sure why the other schools are are the you know there there's some programs that that's had a lot more success as far as winning championships than we've had but you know i'm not i'm not sure why it's I guess it's being in Southeast Georgia, you know. I don't know. You, you know, a lot of these guys are very successful in baseball because either their dad played or their granddad or a brother or an uncle. And so they start playing young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? And, and you would think in these other towns that and for these athletes to be as good as they are, they started when they were young with the yeah. tradition with the dad and the granddad and the uncles and all that kind of stuff. I've just never quite understood that, why Wayne County has such a great – atmosphere when it comes to baseball and so many people out there i know one of the reasons because we are successful and have been for a long time but you think these other ones too yeah with too because you know of the tradition which you know they got to start young if you're gonna have that tradition year right. in year out but it's just amazing just hats off to all the fans here in wayne county yeah oh yeah and i, I would say this if you ride by the rec department on a monday tuesday or thursday there's nowhere to park out there either you know yeah. i think that's a big having a great recreation department that 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 I'm not sure the numbers. I'm sure Speck can give the numbers on how many kids have signed up to play baseball. I'm sure it's <laughs> it's a pile of them. And, you know, I think that's one important thing. of and that, That's part of our program at the high school. It, go, it filters all the way down into the to the recreation. You know, that's very important. Uh, you know, I know I got a, my son's involved in it now. And, you know, being able to come through and play and, and develop their skill. And, and, you know, ultimately everyone's – goal i'm sure is to play for the high school team and you know i think that's something that, that keeps kids going and keeps kids working here somebody just text in here uh, we've had a few of them saying uh, go jackets and you know all that kind of stuff and we appreciate them sending that in just say the team supporting the the team here and the coach and the players and everybody uh with the text messages this morning but someone just asked a question uh, ask coach what the scouting report on st pius what is the scouting report on them uh, I guess they they're hot right now. You know they they forced two game threes uh, against Eastside and Blessed Trinity. I do know, uh, you know, Eastside did take two from Loganville the last week of the regular season to to push Loganville to the two seed. And you know St. Pius is in the region with Decatur. Decatur won the region. That's who beat Carter or Carterfield beat Decatur. So uh, again, that that proves right there. I know Decatur beat St. Pius twice in the regular season, and then Decatur got beat by the. The uh, number two seed in that region with Blessed Trinity, so that that's all about being the better team on that day. And you know, you could probably play that series three or four more times with Carterfield and Decatur, and it may come out different every time. So again, you know, we're going again. Our motto has kind of been, you know, as coaches, we're going to get some stuff together and and kind of put a plan together. But you know, our kids, they need they they're more worried about whether or not they're going to be the best version of us that day. And you know, that's worked so far. And you know, they've kind of embraced that and understand it that if they're not the best version then it it could go our way we just we just need to try to be the best version of us that day on monday you know such a you mentioned it was such a team effort you know so many things happen that game tuesday if brad doesn't pitch a shutout yeah. first inning no telling what if, if zach thomas doesn't break and score that head first slide to give us a 4-3 lead i mean if they don't drop the ball first base i mean right. there's so many things that you know if you just go back and analyze it i mean little things just Add up. No, yeah, no, sure. we we brought the infield in late. Uh, they were the runner, or I think it was second and third with one out, and we had a, a one-two count. We decided to pull the infield in and hit a ground ball to Blake and check the runner and got the out at first, and we ended up getting out of the end. And if we're still back, they score that run, and it's a tie game at the end. So again, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of things that that you know, you know, some kids may feel like they didn't uh, bring what they needed to the table for that win, but you know. Obviously, there's something that every everybody did. As as I said, if Brad didn't throw a scoreless first inning, then if they scored just one run in that inning, if they scored two, we lose. So you know that that's a big part. I, I guess some may think that's different the way I think about it, but I think everything you do in a game from the first pitch to the last pitch matters, and you know obviously everything at the end gets magnified. But that first inning is just as important as seventh inning, and then. You know, that's been our mentality all year. And well, like, that, like they said, it ain't over till it's over. Correct. And that Northside Columbus had a good, you know, I go back and think about that series. The, the catches the guy in the center field made and the two catches oh, yeah. the guy in the right fielder made. Uh, Luke hit one down the line. He dives head yeah. first and makes the catch, and then he made another catch on another ball. Yeah. I mean, they made some phenomenal plays. I mean, well, I was, they were good yeah. baseball team. I know the bottom sure. of the fifth, Zach hit one out in right center, and, you know, right. the guy kind of laid out on the warning track and caught it, and, you know, that's when those thoughts start going through your head that it's just not going to happen today when when stuff's not going your way like that because you can't hit them balls any harder and you know give our kids credit you know they 
they kept battling through it, competing, and you know the the energy of the crowd got into it. I don't know. I, I know when Blake got the third, I <laughs> he tried to high five me, and I missed it, and I thought I might have gave him a concussion. I was hitting him on the head <laughs> so hard, but Bam. You, know, you know I get excited. Over there hit the players. <laughs> I get excited about it too. You know, watching these kids, everything they do from June or coming out of quarantine to being able to work out, and they had to do it in two shifts and. You know, some of them had to get there at six fifteen in a summer morning, four days a week, and the other group come in after. You know, that's not that's not normal for a high school kid to embrace that and be able to do that four days, and you know, then they go play their play play their stuff because we couldn't play do anything with them, so they would go play their stuff on the weekend when when they were able to, and then obviously coming into the the fall and doing the twelve week program with them after school and the four on ones and the the workouts in first block. You know, it's all that stuff starts, you start looking about what they put into it and, you know, the way they went about their business in the off season, they deserve this opportunity. And I just, I, I know we talked to them yesterday about, it, about embracing it and enjoying this moment because, you know, obviously the, these moments don't come. You know, I don't, I'm not sure what number of Elite Eight this is in the, the history of the program. But there's there's not a lot of them. So these are far, far between that you get this opportunity. It was just a strange day of emotion that Tuesday. Like I said, took lightning break, walking around, we're down 7-4, and I'm thinking, you know, all these people here, it's going to be a disappointing day, and I want, you know, everyone's yeah. going to leave up unhappy, and to have that dramatic comeback and have that big celebration at the end, I mean, it was just so much fun, and I'm sure it's going to be fun on Monday as well, because, as mentioned, St. Paul's going to be a good baseball team. You know, like I said, it was funny that you walk around, is this team good? They're all good at this point. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, they're not they're not in the Elite Eight or the Sweet 16 without yeah. being a good baseball team. But yeah. like I said, I'm just glad we got that. I got the monkey off my back with Columbus. Like I said, every time we played Columbus throughout my history, <laughs> it hasn't been on the winning end. So I'm glad to finally knock off a Columbus team. But uh, they were a good baseball team. The catcher was about as good as I've seen. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was he was he was he was an athlete, yeah. and I just had the good pitching as well. And not many people come in and throw a shutout against us. I mean, no. I mean, Townsend threw as good as game as possible. You know, yeah. but a one nothing that's a tough loss. One yeah, zero. you know, he, I, and I, like I told you on the phone, he mentioned Ray mentioned to me yesterday. That's that's back to back. Uh, second round games that he started and lost one to nothing. He, he lost in I think it was nineteen to uh, Thomas Kane Central one nothing in game three and you know that's that's I'm talking about he's got good enough stuff we just got to do a better job of getting him run support you know we had opportunities in that game I know at one time we had second and third and one out and couldn't get a run across so uh, again we you know he's going to do what he does and we just got to get him some run support and you know that'll be kind of the message when, when he gets the ball that, that get him some runs and he's going to do do what he does and Keep you in a game, give you a chance to win. Is Jacob Brewer as funny in practice as he is on? I mean, I, I love talking to this kid after the game. Yeah, he's so honest, and I mean, yeah, anything I ask him, he gives me a direct answer. Oh yeah, I, know. I, we'll I just him, love talking to the kid. We'll ask him sometimes where pitches are, and you know, I want him to tell me they're down the middle, so <laughs> we can feel like we got the the argument. But he'll tell us they're off the plate. Or, uh, he never t- he he that, that's that's character and how he was raised, and you know, he's going he's going to be honest about it and give you the honest answer and. You know, I think one thing if you watch him, he he can he handled that pitching staff and and the the entire defense with such ease and ease and, and you know his leadership style and you know uh, he can he knows when to get out there and and kind of calm everybody down and you know I mean he's I know you can't say enough about what he brings to us every day and I'm talking about he gives everything he's got. It's just me, you know, he just appears that you know like I said since the state playoffs began, the strike zone has become mm. minuscule i mean it looks like they're making them you know and it's but like i said it's for both teams yeah. i mean i mean but it's hard for me for high school pitchers to you know throw it in that perfect yeah. but that's what it looks like from the press box it looked like that way from the dugout that they yeah, throw it in a certain spot yeah, yeah sometimes you know i think i think uh again you know obviously we can't control it but you know sometimes it this is high school baseball and you know there's not many high school kids that can that can throw the ball a quarter of an inch off the plate, and then there's not a lot of high school umpires that can tell me it was a quarter inch off the plate. So, I, at the end of the day, you know, I definitely don't want it to be where kids battling on the mound, two great pitchers are pitching and and pounding balls around the plate and not getting calls. Either way, you know, at the end of the day, let's if if not not take the bat out of the hands, but I, I honestly understand that it, that's 
strikes don't have to be off, over the plate. They can be a little bit off the plate in high school. Well, make sure your boy stay in the box until the umpire calls it because that poor boy from Northside Columbus yeah. at three zero, he thought it was ball four. He threw, flipped oh, yeah. his bat and started walking towards first base, and they yeah. they called it a strike. And then the second pitch was striking, and then that next pitch, <laughs> right. I, I don't know about you, Coach, but it looks like it was yeah. about four feet outside, right. and he rung him up. Well, I think they need to. <laughs> oh, I know. I think they need to make a rule where if you do that, the next pitch automatic strike anyway. So, no, yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of it just seemed like that umpire was sending a message yeah. like, "Don't be walking out of that batter's box until yeah. I call it." But, which well, you know, they, they they starting to shrink the pool down, so uh, you know, there's should less, get better umpires. Game, so they're right. obviously they're. You know, they were the evaluator at our game with Northside. There was it. You know, I think, you know, Georgia, they got a tough job to do with that, too. You know, they, Did we ever find out what the second baseman said to get the warning? I uh, mean, was he talking filthy language as well? What was he sure doing? He, he did something out of line. I I'm mean, sure that umpire there. just pointed at that guy and said, he's got a warning. He did, and that was the coach's son, and he didn't he yeah. didn't like it too much yeah, either. But so. I, what somebody told me in the stands during the lightning break was that I forgot that the second baseman was the brother, the pitcher, the first pitcher. Yeah. They were they, they were both the coach's sons, and he didn't like the calls that the umpire no. was giving to his brother. And he said something. That's mm-hmm. that's what I was told. Yeah. I, don't, I was yeah. just I was just curious if you ever got yeah. any. I didn't clarification yeah. on what was said and I what got him the warning. You know, I, I you know, umpiring high school baseball. It's a tough job. You know, there's split second decisions that you have to make, and you know. Obviously, the the stakes are high in in these situations, and you know, at the end of the day, they, those guys are going to make mistakes just like we are. But you know, the only thing I, I'm concerned, you know, if I make a mistake, there's accountability of it, and you know, I I think that Georgia High School, I, I know I've seen a value. They've been evaluated every one of our playoff games, so you know, they I think they're they're sending people out to to evaluate and 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 make sure they're getting the best effort out of those guys, and that's all you can ask for, and. You know, again, we understand those guys are going to make mistakes, and, and you know, as we are too, they're all human beings. But you know, we just got to control what we can control and and do what do what we can do. Well, the good news is we're playing at home. Like I said we don't have to make that long trip on Monday or Sunday. So, you know, we wish St. Pius safe travels, and we look forward to a big series. And like I said, as soon as we get the official time, we'll have an afternoon sportscast, and okay. we'll have a promo running all weekend, let people know. But um, there's already the excitement. Building, yeah. you know, I was at Billmore Spark last night, and people were watching the <laughs> game on Game Changer, and they were we were going nuts when I said it was three one for a long time. Blessed Trinity was winning. And I'm going, hey, we're we're making that trip, and all yeah. of a sudden they had that big inning when they scored seven runs to take a big yeah. lead. So I said, hopefully things will work out Monday. Uh, if game Tuesday, hopefully we can avoid that if game. But we always feel like we have an advantage if it does go game three because we got that deep pitching staff. Yeah. So we do, and, and you know I. You know, we're going to have to get some guys, some live work here today or tomorrow on the mound. So you have those guys ready that didn't, didn't throw a lot. So, uh, do you again, feel like you have an advantage with these extra days for your starting pitcher? Oh, yeah, I mean, they're going, to, they're going to be well rested. For yeah, right. absolutely. You know, it, it was, you know, Monday was, I think it was around 90, 92 degrees. And, you know, that's, that takes a toll on a, a, a guy that's, that's out there pounding, uh, what, 90 plus pitches and, you know, I think that's going to be crucial for us. And then, you know, they got a three day turnaround, uh, and travel. So, uh, I think that kind of plays in our favor. But again, we just got to be ready to play on Monday at, at the time that, that we get set. And, and, you know, the big thing is, you know, when these people show up, we need to give them something to get excited about. And, you know, if we can do that, then obviously something going in our, going in our favor. I just don't ever remember playing St. Pius. Like I said, I'm familiar with St. Pius because, like, Went to Stone Mountain High School, and that's right in that area. We used to play St. Pius and everything at Stone Mountain. So, you know, it's a Catholic school, private school. So it'll be, you know, yeah. interesting to see what what kind of crowd they do bring down here. Well, I think that was kind of the the deal with them and Blessed Trinity. I think that was kind of a rival, both being Catholic schools. So uh, I think that was kind of a little rival situation between the two. And, you know, sometimes in rivals, you, you kind of get out of your element and your mindset and, and get away from what you're actually good at doing and, you know that's kind of the, one of the messages to our guys too. Don't don't just because it's the the third round or the quarterfinals or lead eight. Don't don't try to do something you hadn't done all year because what what we've done all year has got us to this point. So we just need to continue to do that and trust the work that they put in and trust what they've done all year. And you know it's going to be fun. I, I, I hope our kids really take it in and enjoy it. And and you know it's uh, as you said, it's set up to play here until till the end. So. You know, I don't think it's 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 been like that. You know, there's always been coin tosses and, and things of that nature that that come in. But and know, where's the finals for five A again? I, I I think they're in the. You know, I was 
been told a couple of different places, but I, I want to say it's Gwinnett, the Gwinnett. AAA stadium. I'm not sure which one's named Cool Ray Parker. Okay. I don't know if it's that one or. But uh, again, uh, you know, wherever they tell us to go, if they tell us to go to, I don't know, right. Valdosta, we'll go. Yeah. So it's. It, Somebody asked me, you know, if Ware wins and Wayne wins, would they make us all still go? <laughs> Can we just work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's the thing about Southeast Georgia. There's a lot of teams in Southeast Georgia that are, that are still, still playing. playing. Yeah. They, yeah. Long, they, yeah, Coach Hodge Pierce, and yeah. Long County had a big, big win advance. Win. I mean, the bracket's yeah. not updated. Yeah, Glenn yeah. swept yesterday. They and advanced. And, you so. know, you got Vidalia, you got uh, Jeff Davis, you got Applin, Pierce, Wayne, Glenn. I'm talking about you can – you reel them off. South Effingham still in it. They wear they're long, wear long. So, so it's it's a well represented in the right. bracket state. Yeah. South Georgia so it speaks well for South Georgia baseball. But coach, again, thanks for being with us here on the show. Again, as soon as we get the time, we'll have it for us, everybody on the afternoon sportscast. And again, we're going to promo all weekend long, let people know. But I'm sure it's going to be packed. Uh, I know how word spreads quickly around Wayne County. So as yeah. soon as that official time gets set, everybody will know what it is. And like I said, I'm expecting a huge crowd. On Monday at yeah. Howard Bell Warren Field, it should be fun. We are, we are too, and you know we want to encourage everyone to come out and and you know I, I say it be a factor because they they are a factor, and you know, I you know watching those two teams play this week, you know there might have been two hundred people there combined mm-hmm. with two teams, so I know we'll have that just in student. So and you can go by and get your Elite Eight shirts at Sheffield's Trophy yeah. Sports Shop. Give a plug for one of my sponsors. Oh, there it is. They're yeah. nice shirts. Good. So. Yeah. I know a lot of people have already purchased them, but they are available today and next week and over the weekend at Sheffield. So go by and pick up your Elite Eight shirt. So. All right. Memorable times. Good times. Yeah. Well, Coach, be thanks fun. for coming well, in. I appreciate, we appreciate you guys it. having me. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. All right. The World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Murphy Builder Supply, O'Quinn Associates, Country Financial, and by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings.